after you add your water, checking the salt. Let me just move my screen here. Oop, sorry about that, wrong one. Let me move me so you can see here. So um, adding water to verify your specific gravity. Specific gravity, salinity. Um, you want to use a hydrometer. <coughs> You've all seen these hydrometers. There's pictures of them there. Let me bring my picture back full screen. You've all seen these hydrometers. These float in the water. And I'm going to try to hold this closer to the camera so you can see it. But can you see? Let me see. Uh, there we go. See that green shaded area at the top? That green shaded area right there at the top of the hydrometer? That is the sweet spot. That's the sweet spot right at the top of the hydrometer. Salt makes these float. Remember that. Salt makes them float. Imagine my fingers being the water level. You want to be right within that green shaded area at the tip of the hydrometer. If you have too much salt, it's going to float high. Salt makes these float. It's going to float high. If your green shaded area is above the water line, you have too much salt. If you don't have enough salt, it's going to sink and your water, your green shaded area will be below the water line. So remember, salt makes these float. That's how you measure specific gravity. And again, the, the don't get caught up in the numbers. 1.020 to 1.025 is perfect for a specific gravity. For those of you who are home brewers, you know all about specific gravity. This, this hydrometer will measure that. Just watch that green shaded area. Don't get caught up in the numbers again. We made it easy for you. So you want your water to float right at that green shaded area at the tip of the hydrometer. Um, we always suggest that you use three of these. Unfortunately, I don't have three to show you, but the picture does. You always want to use three of these. And the reason being is because, um, let me just futz around here and move my picture again. You want to use three of these because these are mass produced. I don't trust anything that's mass produced, especially when it comes to measuring or using it to measure um, the toxicity of something. In our case, we're going to measure the salt level. Um, if, if you have one that's faulty, you're not going to know it and your salt levels could be way off. And I say that because we see it all the time. My technicians will go into stores. They'll drop their three hydrometers in the salt water and they'll see that the salt is way off and only to find out that um, the store they were in was using one hydrometer that ended up being faulty because there's a shelf life as well. I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Three hydrometers. If you have one that's faulty, the other two are going to prove it wrong. If you're only using two and you get two different readings, you don't know which one is the liar. So you always want that third one to prove the faulty one wrong. And if they're faulty, I mean, these are cheap. They cost you maybe 10 bucks. Throw it out, order another one. Um, there is a shelf life to these. Six months typically from what I've seen. So I, I and I'm, some are longer, but I always suggest just every six months order new hydrometers. Um, temperature swings will, will affect the accurateness of this. There's a little piece of paper that's in here um, and that little piece of paper over time can shift, uh, especially if you keep it in your desk or if you're putting it in a pencil holder, you know, you drop it in the water and then you're dropping it into your desk or into the pencil holder and all those little, those little, um, you know, those little dings and tangs that could shift that paper um, or the temperature swings when it's going from 45 degrees in the water and then you're putting it in your tank or in your desk, which is like 75 degrees. Um, you know, eventually those temp back in and forth in the tank, out of the tank, in the tank, out of the tank, those temperature swings could affect the accurateness of these. So shelf life, six months. Three is key. Always use three of them and you want it to be at the green shaded area in the middle. These again are available through your paper distributor, um, Bunzel, Imperial, uh, um, Penn Jersey, or whoever you're buying your stuff from, Gordell. There's a bunch of different paper distributors out there that we sell to. So always use three of them. To make your salt water, uh, the general ratio is one pound of salt to four gallons of water. You'll see this right here. Um, one pound of salt to four gallons of water. I'm trying to 
just skipped ahead here. Sorry about that. You still want to check it with your hydrometer, though. So get yourself a dedicated bucket. Um, I like to call them Homer buckets, but those orange buckets that you buy in Home Depot are good. Or if you're in a supermarket and there's a bakery department that uses icing, those are typically four to five gallon buckets. Uh, when you get it, just make sure you wash it out and dry it really well because you don't want any of that sugar left over in there in your water. Um, fill it up to, um, to a four gallon mark and mix in the one pound of salt. That's a good start. Check it with your three hydrometers and then adjust it as needed. Again, the salt makes these float. If it floats too high, you have too much salt. You want to add water to water it down. If it floats too low, you need to add salt to get it up um, and mix it in that bucket. Mix it aggressively to dissolve all the salt and then go ahead and add that water back into your lobster tank. You don't want to just dump fresh water into a lobster tank and then adjust the salt within the tank because you are so at risk at that point of uh, screwing up your specific gravity. So you want to make sure that whatever goes into the tank as far as water is concerned is accurately measured and perfect.